Okay, how's everybody doing? This is a second video here. And uh, I wasn't going to bore everybody with my soldering skills because they uh, really aren't that great. But anyway, I uh, this is the newer tender from the 1950s, the one with the wire broken that I showed you in the last video. Uh, soldering, a couple things. Safety first here. A lot of these, all of these, as a matter of fact, old tenders from the 40s, 50s, and probably even into the 60s and in the 70s, used a lead solder. Whenever you're working with a lead solder, be sure you have plenty of ventilation, okay? And try not to breathe this stuff in. It's not really good for you, okay? Uh, just a word to the wise. This is flex core, but I still use flex, flux, whatever you want to call it. I still use this um flux paste flux a lot of this new solder is flux core um and it's supposed to be okay and work and i just it's a little extra it cleans it a little bit extra anyway what we got here is i've got this taken apart i pulled the brushes out these are the brushes here there's two of them uh and they're on springs you want to make sure the springs don't disappear they're not in that bad a shape, really. Uh, they're a little dirty. Could you stand some cleaning? This is, you know, it's, you can see it's kind of dirty there. So I am going to clean it with a little isopropyl alcohol. And uh, let me give her a clean here. And scrub this down. And of course, you can see it's pretty dirty. Okay, it uh, it's it, it makes a better connection with the less dirt on it. At least that's what I have found. Now I've checked the other tender, and of course, it still whistles just fine, but uh, it'll get taken apart and cleaned as well. Because uh, again, this stuff, a lot of this is very old. It sat in closets, it sat in basements or in attics, and it just, uh, it doesn't hurt to give them a good cleaning. Uh, I inspect some of the wiring here and the armature and whatnot to make sure things are fine. And again, you can see it's still pretty dirty, even after uh, hitting it with isopropyl alcohol and uh, cotton swab here one more time around um, you can use anything pretty much alcohol isopropyl alcohol is one of the better things uh, there is electronics cleaner I have some spray here uh, if it's particularly nasty in there I'll give it a spray with that it doesn't hurt the electronics at all yeah, allow it to dry, of course, before you start messing with it. Um, I'm trying to get in here where the, uh, and you can see again, you go through a lot of, uh, a lot of Q-tips here, uh, getting this dirt out from, you know, 60, 70, 80 years ago. There we go, all the way in that time. And we'll get it out. Okay, that side's not so bad. Um, I think I went through cleaning the wife's dad's locomotive. I think I went, and the tender, I went through probably uh, a couple of dozen. Um, luckily, they're fairly cheap. And uh, here we go. See, that's not so bad. Now I'll set this aside and let it dry. And, of course, I will... Uh, Attack the end of these a little bit. Try to get some. Of, you can see they're pretty dirty. Uh, that's better. And we will get this one again. And while I'm thinking about it, I did solder on the. I put, did add the new coupling. Uh, there's the old truck. You can see the coupler was broke. This came off of the wife's dad's tender. The new one is now on there. The wire's been soldered. I just used the wire that I already had on there. 
The reason I have not put the shell back on is because I have uh, uh, water slide decals, brand new. They still make these aftermarket uh, that go on either side of the tender. I'll set this down for a second and see if I can show you these. Well, they're kind of, I'm not going to take them out, but they'll show you when the tender, when I do the shell and I do the decals, I will shoot a short video and uh, show you those and you can get a kind of an idea. It said New York Central on them, the old ones, and they were flaking off. As a matter of fact, one side was completely gone. The other side, it was unreadable. So I found a place online that uh, made replacement aftermarket water slide decals for the tenders. And again, you have to know which, whoops, bumped the table there. You have to know which version you have. One of them, uh, there was a gray version of this and uh, it was, uh, it had uh, white lettering. The black version of this had silver lettering and you could also get uh, them with black lettering. Now, I still have the shell is in the kitchen. I'm going to wash it thoroughly with some soapy water and then rub it down to get my fingerprints. Anytime you're dealing with uh, painting or, or water slide stickers, you want to make sure the oils from your hands are not all over what you're messing with or things will not stick properly. And again, this is for the newbies out there, the people that may, you know, be new at this. Um, you can wear, if you're worried about chemicals, uh, you can wear rubber gloves. I will, if I'm working with something pretty caustic, I don't consider isopropyl alcohol to be that bad. If I'm working with paint or anything uh, like a paint stripper, uh, you'll see me wearing rubber gloves. Um, but trying to work with tiny little parts in rubber gloves, as many of you probably know, is almost impossible. So unless, as like I said, it's an extremely caustic uh, solution, like a paint stripper or even paint or something, I, I, won't, use, uh, I, I won't use anything on it on my hands. Um, so anyway, the shell is going to get washed and then it will get rubbed down with isopropyl alcohol, and then I'll put the uh, water slide stickers on. Uh, I may or may not do that on a video. We'll see. Uh, it's the first time I've ever tried anything like this, and I, I've i already watched a couple of videos myself, um, so we'll see. Like I said, you may see me with my other phone over here and a video playing on it to show me how to do it, and again, I'm no expert at this, so I'm not afraid to admit that I don't know some of this stuff, and it's probably a better idea to go to people who do this all the time. It's never, don't ever be afraid, again, for the newbies, to ask questions. As we used to say in the Navy, there's no such thing as a dumb question, only dumb answers. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's the uh, the wife's dad's, uh, the tender that came from the wife's dad's set, a new truck on it new coupler and this is called a coil coupler um, it's kind of hard to see the coil in there this goes over a section of track and you press a button and it uncouples the, the cars behind it and her dad said every one of the cars that came with the set had a coil coupler on it um, most of the, i don't know if they work or not uh, we'll see they're pretty simple so i'm pretty sure they will uh, I have to dig that section of track out that has the that does the work here, and we'll do that later uh, again when I move. Um, anyway, getting back to this, I don't know if you can see it's much cleaner now. This is much cleaner. Now, the one thing I have found with getting the uh, brushes back in, and also a lot of your more modern locomotives and modern electric motors are brushless. Now, there's two ways to do this. There's a hard way, which is very frustrating. You can try and flip this, and of course, they fall out. Or you can lift this up, and we will, you have to line all the holes up. There we go. 
and it's right back in. And there are a couple of nuts here that hold this down. And we will, there's the other one. Now I could have a tiny wrench in here and I will eventually have a toolbox in here uh, on my workbench when we move with all of the tools I'll be using for model railroading. Currently I have toolboxes out in my workshop with all my mechanicing tools in it that I've had over the years screwdrivers, wrenches, all that stuff. Um, uh, to keep running in and out to grab what I need is kind of stupid. These pliers, needle nose, work just fine. It, it's not like it has to be uh, a torque down or anything. And uh, you just got to kind of snug them up. Anyway, okay. Now I need to cut wires and run them and resolder them. And again, I'm going to have to probably... Uh, disassemble some more of this to get the trucks off. As you can see, there's not a lot of room under here for soldering. Um, so probably end up taking some of this apart to pop the trucks off and move them out here where it's a little easier to solder. And I'll do that, of course, off camera because, again, my soldering skills are rusty and uh, this gets rather annoying and... Uh, I can also take these two nuts off and take this whole piece and set it aside. And again, I haven't decided yet which one I'm going to do. What I have said, though, was I was going to show you uh, locomotives running. And I'm going to use the 1947 um, transformer because it's already hooked up keep bumping the table here. I'm not used to having something quite so close to me. You can hear the hum. Okay. We'll start with this one. This is the wife's dad's. Um, I need to make sure the uh, piece that the uh, part that hooks into the tender, if it touches that third rail, it tends to want to short out a little bit. We'll give it a little. There we go. Okay, there's still something going on with the light here. Uh, it works occasionally. It kind of works when it feels like it. Um, it's, it's good enough for now. And again, once we move and I get everything set up where I want it and I have a bigger area, I may take this back apart and figure out what's going on with the light because it kind of works when it feels like it. The bulb is still good. It's probably the wiring. Um, so for now, we'll leave that alone. Anyway, here is this one, and this, I think I lied to you yesterday. This is actually the sluggish one, but again, one of the reasons I think these two are sluggish more is this transformer is lower wattage than this one. Um, so it, uh, it, it will act sluggish, but even on this one yesterday, these were both a little on the sluggish side. Uh, make sure it's on the tracks, and I will... You can see, and that is all the way up on the transformer. That should be going a lot faster than it is. There's forward. Okay, we'll kill the power on that. And then we will, we will do this one. This one is a little faster. Um, And while I've got it here, I will also, while I've got the transformer up and going, I will also uh, show you the two whistle tenders that are working. You'll hear the whistle. So this one is a little faster, but this one will not change direction. Okay, this one does not want to change direction regardless of whatever I do. 
So this one's going to have to come apart. But they run, which is really nice, which is a better a head start than what I had with uh, the two from the 1940s. Now, this may get a little loud. This is the whistle tender that works. And this one will also get taken apart here and cleaned, even though it works. Um, you saw how the other one looked. This one looks no different inside, I'm sure. The other thing I want to do is there's a couple places, like right here, you put a little dab of 3-in-1 oil, and it helps to lubricate. And if I take these off, there's a spot on the bottom. You can put a little oil on it, too, and it keeps it lubricated. So you don't have to, um, uh, it, it just makes it run better. Um, anyway, this is all the way turned up. Whistle. Okay. 1950s. You heard the little rattle at first. That's the uh, part of it that makes it whistle. I don't honestly know if that was that way in the 1950s. Um, I know that both the 1940s tenders make that noise to some degree. Um, and I've cleaned and, and, and done everything I can. I've lubed everything up and oiled it, and they still tend to want to make that first noise. You have to give the thing a little power. Okay. That's 1947. This thing probably has not whistled since my wife was uh, seven or eight. Uh, it did not do anything when I first got it. <clears throat> and there we have it. Uh, most of the wiring on this, by the way, which is very little wiring, is original. I looked it over when I first took it apart. Um, and it looked just fine. I did not see any real dry rot. I saw no need to really go in and rewire it. Uh, had I seen dry rot, um, these were the only ones, the wires that went to the trucks were the only ones that were so badly dry rotted. Uh, had I seen a lot of dry rot or whatnot, I would have changed a lot of these wires over at that point. But since I didn't, I really couldn't see the need for doing it. As long as the wires are in good shape, they're not corroded, they're not broken, there's no sense in changing them, okay? A lot of this stuff built back in those days was built to last. And then, seriously, this stuff was kept in closets. Nobody really model railroad much back in the era when these were built. Uh, they came out a couple times a year, and they got put away. So they sat, and they sat and they, you know, and so honestly, for the age of these things, they're in very good shape. A um, couple of new wires, a little cleaning, and it works just fine. The other one that's packed away with the 1946 locomotive is the same way. It works beautifully. Um, nothing at all wrong with it. So there you have it. Now, again, I will not bore you with my soldering skills. Um, I may just take this apart, and I really don't know if I want to do that. Well, I can do it right now. It really isn't that big a deal. Uh, I need my reading glasses. Uh, getting old is uh, fun. Uh, you, you start. Okay, we will take this. And if you also are scared you might misplace parts, everybody has a cell phone these days with a camera on it. Don't be afraid to take pictures. And then we'll expose the clip you can see there's a clip here that holds the truck on there's another one here the trick to getting those out is there is no trick um, there's no easy way to take those off so it it is just kind of a hit or miss thing uh, there there make special tools i'm sure if you're using ow i pinched my hand on that one that was really good Time to break out the uh, a different set of pliers here. A little more meat to them. And there we go. Uh, we, yeah, we got that going. There we are. Sometimes it just takes a little gentle persuasion here. And... get them to come off and 
while I have this off, and of course the other one will be the same way, I'll check the base, I'll check everything here to make sure that uh, things look good. There's no major corrosion, no dirt, uh, nothing of that nature. And wiggle that loose. And there we have it. Oh, there is some dirt in there. I don't know if you can see. There's some dirt in there. We will, I will do what I can to dig some of that out. That will help. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of, it looks like cat hair or pet hair of some sort. Dust bunnies abound in there. It's hard to see. So it's a good thing I decided to take it apart. Now, I'll set this aside for the time being. This, I believe, is what they did. Uh, it sets in here, and I just put it in backwards, of course. This sets in here, kind of like that. And I believe the thought was to scoop air into it or for the sound to come out. Uh, this is also a little dirty on the inside. It's nothing I can't handle. Now, let's see if I can take one of these out. What I do is I put the pliers on part one on the stud and one on the feet of the clip and then just try to work it backwards. And that is probably the hardest. Now, if that does not work, there's one other way to do it, and that is to just force it out of there, which isn't the way I really like to do it, honestly. But sometimes there's no other real choice here to get it off. There. It's a little bent out of shape, but I can always, I've got a little hammer and an anvil. I can put it back down where it belongs. Of course, while I have the trucks off, I'll inspect it, clean anything that needs cleaned, and then I can take the old solder off with ease. Let's spin this one around and see if I have any better luck getting this one out of here. And just to uh, and this one is going to fight me as well, it appears. The thing is, is they move, so as you're trying to pop them out of there, they want to move and wiggle and go every which way but where you want them to go, which is sliding off of the groove. There's a groove in there. There we are. There. Um, yeah, and don't lose that. There's a groove in there. I don't know if you can see it here. It's right here that those slide in that hold them to the body of the tender. The other thing you do want to make sure you do is if you're going to take this apart, make sure you know which end is forward again. Don't uh, set it aside and walk away from it for any length of time. If your memory is like mine, uh, you will forget. And again, this is great because everybody has cameras on their phones. You can snap a picture of it as you're taking it down. And then you remember kind of where everything was. So anyway, that is where we're at. Um, I'm going to clean this up, of course, off camera. I'm not going to bore you with my cleaning skills or my soldering skills. I did say I was going to uh, show you how everything worked. I'll put that aside, put this over here with it, and I'm going to disconnect the track since I am done with it for now. Kind of get it out of my way. Anyway, there you have it. Uh, and again, safety first when it comes to soldering. Uh, <clears throat> it is, a lot of this old stuff is, again, lead-based. We don't want to be breathing that. Make sure you have, you know, a well-ventilated area. Uh, you try not to breathe it in. I know that sometimes that's, that's you know, kind of hard to do. Um, wear a mask. Uh, it's basic same thing if you were painting with an oil-based or a spray gun. You want to wear a mask. You don't want paint particles in your lungs. Uh, you don't want lead particles in your lungs. It's not healthy. 
and uh, just take it easy and uh, do it, go slow. And again, if you don't know how to solder, um, there's videos. It really isn't that hard. The other thing I recommend, especially if you're doing a lot of wires and tiny things, you need three hands. I suggest one of these. It's a helping hand. Um, you can pick these up cheap or online and uh, they're totally adjustable. You can move them up and down and you can adjust these and you can put wire in them. It also acts a bit of like a heat sink. So if you're, if you're soldering, for instance, and of course I threw the wire out that I had over here, you clip the wire in when you're soldering your, your wire to, to put your solder on it. And you want this clipped as close to where you strip the wire as possible. So it acts as a heat sink. Your heat's not running up the wire and, and dissipating faster than it's heating what you're trying to work on. Um, that's one of the biggest things. And these are also great because, again, sometimes you just need a third hand. These are perfect. Um, I suggest, highly recommend these. Uh, so I picked that up, as a matter of fact, because before that I was using this and a couple of clamps and this is annoying <laughs> but again you deal with what you got on hand i had a, would have a clamp in here clamp down uh, one of these holding the wire they're not exactly alligator clips they're not the most fantastic things for holding wires together but that's what i had so i started using that um this came out of my shop and of course it's going to be moving with me so it will not I'm not putting it back in the shop. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, that's everything for today. And uh, later on, I will show you uh, these back together, new wires cleaned up and whistling. And hopefully these, I will be taking these apart probably in another video. And again, uh, I'm going to be doing them one at a time because uh, I don't want them all torn apart and then be in the middle of a move. It depends on what's going on with them. I will pull one down, and you'll see the process, what it looks like, what, how it looks before and during and after. And we'll also see it running again, and we'll go from there. Anyway, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you next time.